Welcome and well met. I am the Quonset Manager, and you are listening to the third installment of the Great Bear Island Tourist Information Kiosk video series. In this video, we will be discussing the Trans Island Railway Line. This will be broken up into two different sections. This is the history section. For those visitors from other countries, in Canada, they are referred to as railways, not railroads. Just a bit of trivia for our foreign tourists. The history of the railway has been shaped by three significant geological events and one geopolitical one. Starting with the formation of the Great Bear Island, the island's location on the Pacific Rim in the British Columbia Providence was the beginning of its existence. The formation of a deep magma chamber at the plate's boundaries pushed up from the sea floor and created the Curran Island, which is a mix of metamorphic and sedimentary rock. This includes many rich veins of low sulfur coal. While originally settled by many independently minded people, the island eventually attracted more industrial individuals who were seeking out Great Bear's many natural resources. The first major business was the whaling industry, but quickly owners of that company discovered the coal in the nearby hills and sparked off a bit of a mini coal rush, one could say. Unfortunately, the few locals with claims to the land were bought out, and the mining and logging industry quickly moved in. This is when the railroad was first built. Originally, the native population was completely blindsided by the rapid progress and the industrialization of the island. A strong resistance to mainlanders cropped up throughout the local population. The locals tried to block the railroad's progress across the island as a way to stop the advance of mainlander interests. The result was the industrial leaders called upon political favors to create the Mystery Lake National Park. With the formation of the park, the central government could seize the area around Mystery Lake under the auspice of protecting the land. Of course, they then turned around and seceded rights to various industrial interests such as the right to build a railroad right down the middle of said national park. Needless to say, it was this blatant abuse of governmental power that galvanized the people of Great Bear against the central government. This is the second event that shaped the railway. When they attempted to extend the railway past Coastal Highway, they planned on plowing straight through the mountains and through Pleasant Valley. However, all of Pleasant Valley was owned by locals who had no intention of selling one square meter of land to the Trans Island Railway. So in a way, the creation of the Mystery Lake National Park, which helped the railway go through the island, then came back to bite the industrialists in the behind. As they tried to use the exact same trick to get the railway through Pleasant Valley, the courts would not take their side. The courts ruled that the island already had one national park, and because that the land was not contiguous, it would not be extended. Furthermore, the creation of two national parks on the same island was obviously impossible to justify. As a workaround, the Trans Island Railway Company simply tunneled under the ground to extend its railway past Pleasant Valley. The same sedimentary rock that was so rich in coal also made it feasible to simply tunnel through the area to the desired destination. However, this would prove to be the eventual downfall of the Trans Island Railway Company. Now, the third event was the Great Bear Earthquake of 2012. The tunnel that went under Pleasant Valley was completed an unknown time before the earthquake, but it was thought to be somewhere around the year 2000. The 2012 earthquake occurred not long after the financial collapse of the early 21st century. The collapse, as it would come to be called, resulted in a mass immigration from the island, with industry on the island basically getting a blind eye from government investigators as long as they kept paying taxes. This was not to last long as the earthquake in 2012 destroyed large sections of the railway. This was simply too much for the island's already fragile economy, and the island would be reduced to a mere fraction of its former industrial output. While the local industry was already in decline, what with the so-called low-hanging fruit already picked in the area, 
This earthquake was simply the last nail in the coffin, completely overloading a system already pushed to the brink of collapse. Since 2012 to this past year, parts of the railway were still maintained and used, but at a greatly diminished capacity. The part of the railway we will be examining in detail is one such section. This particular section was what made it possible for the aborted attempt to reactivate the Carter Hydroelectric Plant. The attempt was halted quite recently, and the plant was in the process of being shut down when the fourth and final event occurred. The final event, of course, being the Aurora Earthquake. Now, at the same time as the first Aurora event, there was a simultaneous seismic event that affected Great Bear Island. The specifics we will go into in our video about the Aurora. The effects of this earthquake were not as dramatic as the 2012 event, but still caused quite a substantial amount of damage. We will be going into the specific effects of this in greater detail in our next video about the Trans Island Railway. The railway stretches over most of the island, ranging from the coastal highway all the way to Broken Railroad. Along this stretch, there is only one spur that is on the ravine map. The railway originally exited the mountains at a point north of Desolation Point, but the earthquake of 2012 completely collapsed this section of the railway because, unfortunately, most of it was underground. The whaling industry is stationed out of Desolation Point, where mostly only flat bottom boats can safely navigate. The collapse of the train tunnel in 2012 forced all products from Hiberia Processing to be shipped to Coastal Highway via flat bottom boat for eventual transfer to a deep sea going vessel. Between 2012 and today, the railway was only in use between Coastal Road and Mystery Lake, which has become a bit of a government boondoggle. Unfortunately for the central government, it is in no position to gracefully back out of Mystery Lake National Park. They have been forced to maintain the park, even though the various industrials who maneuvered to have the national park brought into existence have all long since moved on to greener pastures. The overwhelming evidence that was provided to justify the existence of the park in the first place is now used by those who see its existence as one of the few trickles of income from outside the island. So while the locals are of mixed mind about things involving the mainland, the ones fighting to keep Mystery Lake Park open were winning. Well, right up until the end of the world. But let's not dwell on the negative. Up until the end, the railway was used to transport lumber from the logging camp, ferry campers and tourists into and out of the area, and provide a supply line to the Carter Hydroelectric Dam for the transfer of heavy equipment. The other end of the railway was in use until the Aurora Quake, but only between points beyond the now-collapsed railway bridge over the chasm and the maintenance yard. Many people ask, why is the railway maintenance yard still in use, considering how far it is from the more active part of the railway? The answer is that most workers would move along the coastal highway. The coastal highway goes along well, a great deal length of the island's coastline, as per its namesake. Uh, for people who think that workers would somehow transverse forlorn muskeg, I'm afraid that, well, that is only needed now that the bridge has collapsed over the ravine. And yes, that is a rather long commute between work sites, but the additional cost was minor in comparison to the costs of repairing the railway itself. This has been the history of the Trans Island Railway Line. Look for a second video on this topic where we explore the current state of the Trans Island Railway and the various features that you can find along this particular shaft of steel that heads through a major part of Great Bear Island. Thank you for stopping by the Bear Island Tourist Kiosk. Be sure to stop by the Quonset Garage if you find yourself needing any supplies. Just remember our motto, Quonset Garage, where the water is always free.